Biologist John Martin surveys a plateau on a mountainside in the San Diego National Wildlife Refuge above Chula Vista. He can see downtown San Diego from this hard-to-reach vantage spot, but that's not what he's here to look at. So this open area that I'm sitting in here is, is a high-quality habitat for Kino checker spot butterfly. Martin is kneeling in a swath of coastal sage scrub. The spaces between the bigger plants are covered with algae, lichens, and mosses. Those plants keep invasive weeds at bay. But allow this plant, this tiny little grass-like plant, Plantago erecta, to grow in profusion. And the caterpillars of Kino checker spot need this plant to survive. This habitat is considered prime territory for the Kino. The fragile butterfly lays eggs on or around the California plantain in the spring. The eggs and the larvae spend most of their life on the plant, the ground, or safely tucked in a web-like cocoon. When they emerge from summer dormancy, uh, when, the, when the winter rains come out, uh, they cause this plant to, to emerge and start growing, and the caterpillars emerge from dormancy and eat this and grow and shed their skins and, and grow some more uh, until they're about, oh, three centimeters long or so. Mm -hmm. For about three weeks in the spring, adult yeah, kinos yeah. breed. Their black, brown, and white-covered wings used to be a common sight here. Millions flew from the Santa Monica Mountains to Baja California. But the population crashed in the mid-1970s, and Kinos finally got endangered species protection in 1997. Sprawling suburbs stole a lot of the butterfly's habitat. Fire and drought also took a toll on an increasingly isolated species. It's kind of like a bouncing ball, like this is a species that booms and busts. Susan Wynn is a Fish and Wildlife Service biologist who spent a lot of time and energy working to improve the butterfly's future. But each time the ball bounces, it's not bouncing quite as high. And, um, and so some of these sites has just bounced so low that they, can't, they don't have that resiliency or that adjacent population to rebound from. And so we're hoping to get the techniques sort of figured out so that when we need to give it a little, a little boost, bounce the ball a little higher, we'll have that ability and that we'll have that in our toolbox. That boost came from a partnership developed with a San Diego zoo. Wynn says biologists spent two unsuccessful years trying to capture local female kinos on the refuge. Yes, it was very concerning, but it was sort of reinforcing that, that we were on the right track, that this is something important to do. And um, so last year we did end up going up to Riverside because they had populations that were big enough to collect from. Those genetically similar butterflies were brought back to a tiny trailer on the San Diego Zoo's grounds. Entomologist Paige Howorth set up a captive rearing plan. So the adult females that we receive from the wild come in, and we set them up in these enclosures with the host plant. So this is what they'll lay their eggs on. The effort produced more than 700 larvae, which by late fall were still hibernating. Howorth says that's uncommon for most butterflies, but typical for the kino. It's occurring at the same time that the host plant in the habitat is completely drying up and going away. So they just kind of shut everything down for several months until the winter rains start again. And the larvae the were released on the refuge in December, nestled inside modified brown Christmas tree bulbs. About 800 caterpillars joined them in January. Biologist Susan Wynn was hoping the kinos would take their cues from nature, the butterflies did get a huge boost from a wet winter, which allowed the plants they feed on to thrive. And the payoff for Wynn and John Martin came this spring. We did it, John. <laughs> we'll have done it. When they come next year. Next year. If we don't augment here next year, I don't know. We'll see. During a brief visit in the middle of March, Wynn and Martin were delighted to see the kinos flying on the refuge. They spotted about 20 of the rare adult butterflies fluttering around the release site. That raises hope that the extraordinary captive rearing program could have a lasting impact. It worked. They are right on track with the natural populations as far as, you know, they're emerging the same week. The natural populations are emerging. The Fish and Wildlife Service has enough money set aside to do two more years of captive rearing and releasing. The hope is that the effort will boost the local population enough to allow the butterflies to spread on the refuge. Eventually, biologists would like to see a self-sustaining population. Eric Anderson, KPBS News.